recorded. Um, we also have translation services available. You'll see an interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and um, there's simultaneous translation into Spanish. Also, um, we are asking um, uh, everyone to keep their microphones and videos on mute um, unless called on during public comments or if you're a, a board member or key staff for this evening. Thank you. Take it away, John. Great, thanks so much, Sarah. And I just point out that we have six board members present right now. Board member Leon Vasquez is on her way. So we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I encourage all of you to unmute and stand with me and place your hand over your heart if you choose to do so and repeat after me. One, two, three. The Pledge of Allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, Republic which it stands, which stands with one nation, one nation under God, invisible, with liberty, Justice for all. Thank you all, and feel free to mute again. Um, what a strange world we're in. I never thought we would say these things so facilely. Um, approval of the, well, before the approval of the agenda, I've got five things to read out from closed session. <sighs> okay. One is DN. 1011-2021. Kindly note that the summary of the settlement is as follows. The, the district agrees to reimburse parents for students' educational and educationally related services not to exceed $80,000. The district agrees to pay reasonable attorney fees not to exceed $19,000. Motion by Dr. Tefilder and Jesswin, seconded by uh, board member Foster. That was approved 7-0. DN 1012-2021. Kindly note that the summary of the settlement is as follows. The district agrees to reimburse parents for students' educational and educationally related services, not to exceed $63,067. That motion was made by Dr. Tabilder and Jesswin, uh, seconded by board member Leon Vasquez. That was approved 7-0. DN 1013, 2021, final settlement agreement. Kindly note that the summary of the settlement is as follows. Uh, the district agrees to pay attorney fee not to exceed $146,000. Motion made by board member Foster, seconded by board member Tavilder and Jesswin. Uh, okay, uh, we had government code 54956.9D1. Oh, sorry, I didn't have to give you that, my apologies. Uh, case number SC128933. District agrees to a settlement amount of $25,000. Motion by board member, uh, board vice president Lieberman, seconded by board member Foster, approved 7 0. Lastly, um, item public employee dis discipline, dismissal, release. Uh, in closed session, the board took action to accept the superintendent's recommendation to immediately dismiss a probationary classified employee identified by number SV6388546 pursuant to ed code sections 45302, 45304, and personnel commission rule 14.1, uh, effective November 11, 2020, and directed the superintendent or designee to notify the director of classified personnel of the board's action. Mo uh, motion by board member Foster, seconded by board member to builder and Jesswin, approved 7-0. That is all we have from closed session, and now we are approval of the agenda. So do I have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? Motion by board member Foster, seconded by board vice president Lieberman. Uh, we will do a roll call vote. I'm just a heads up to my student board members that I will also call on you for this roll call vote. Um, uh, Craig. Richard. Yes. Lori. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Oscar. Yes. Maria. I guess we should point out that Maria joined us while I was doing the readout. So all seven board members are here. Brianna. Yes. Estelle. <coughs> Estelle, are you with us? I know I saw you logged in. Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. Okay, cool. <laughs> you approve the agenda? That's yes. submitted? Wonderful. Did Emily Jackson join us? I don't see her. I don't think she has. So the agenda has been approved. I am also a yes. Thank you all. We have one set of minutes to approve, October 15th, 2020. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? Moved by Maria, seconded by Richard. Are there any corrections or adjustments? Well, I guess we already have a motion to approve it as submitted. So I'll assume there are no corrections or adjustments. 
roll call vote. Uh, let's go the other way. Estelle. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Brianna. Yes. Maria. Yes. Oscar. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Lori. Yes. Richard. Yes. Greg. That's a thumbs up and I'm a yes as well. So the minutes are approved as, uh, uh, as submitted, which brings us to communications. So we will start our communications report tonight with our report from our Santa, Santa Monica High School board member, Brianna Cornejo Perez. Take it away, Brianna. Great, thank you so much. Good evening, uh, members of the board and fellow SMMUSD stakeholders. Today, I'll be giving a brief report on the happenings from Santa Monica High School students, events and activities. Following up with report items from the previous um, report, there is still prevalent concern regarding screen time, but there are no new developments to report. To begin, I would like to give an update on past and upcoming events held by SAMO, SAMO's Associated Student Body. We recently had a homecoming spirit week where students had Disney themed dress up days and interactive events, such as talent show submissions, TikTok videos and riddle challenges. Upcoming students of student events include a class of 2022 fundraiser at Chipotle at the Third Street location and a class of 2021 fundraiser at the Ocean Park Pizza from November 9th through the 13th. Also, November is Native American Heritage Month, so we will be creating infographics and presentations available to all students regarding Native American history. Um, some athletic teams are beginning to return, including water polo and football. Other sports teams will watch their progress and accommodations to COVID to monitor their returns. Many would like a set schedule of when team practices would be allowed to return to campus. Um, next report involves the November 3rd presidential election where many Santa Monica High School juniors and seniors dedicated their weekends and election day to working um, the polls. Students had the opportunity to help out in the democratic process of in-person voting and give back to their communities. This week has been one of heightened anxiety for many students as the elections results roll out. We hope that all teachers are understanding of these stressful conditions for students and that is reflected in our classroom environments. Ms. Paulus, our activities director, will be holding a meeting after the candidate results are finalized so that students have the opportunity to discuss their fears, hopes, dreams, and anxieties for the future. The meeting will be available to all students and will be held in a bipartisan fashion um, to process the results and reflect on how we can begin to unify. Thank you very much for this opportunity to update you on important matters to the high school student body. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brianna. And now we will go to our Malibu student board member, Estelle Shaw. Hello and good evening, everyone. So first on behalf of ASB, we appreciated meeting with Dr. Jody and discussing the plans for school to reopen. I know that a few other ASB members wish they had a little extra time to share some opinions. So I'll have them reach out to me and then I can email you. And then um, I'm also happy to report that Malibu High students have pretty much fully adjusted to this online learning system and are managing to work to the work system quite well. We're grateful for the new days of asynchronous learning that um, give us the time to catch up on any overwhelming work. I know that teachers are trying to cut down on the 80 minute lectures and add in different activities during class to make them more interesting, but students would still appreciate like any extra asynchronous time that we could give. Um, additionally, I just wanna mention that um, Malibu Spirit Week was a success last week. Um, ASB is really trying to come up with interactive activities and over Halloween, we paired up with local businesses to give students discounts on local sweet shops around Malibu. So that was really fun for students. Thank you. Thanks so much, Estelle. And I, I for, forgive just one moment. I think I speak for the board when we just really thank thank you both for what for sh for sharing what our students are doing to get through a, an incredibly difficult time, and you guys presenting things in such a positive way really, 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 really shows the the. I guess the best of what our, our, the SMM USD students have to offer. So thank you both for being here tonight. Um, I, I don't see Emily, so which is why I said that there. Sarah, I, I don't see Emily. Okay, um, which brings us to our union reports. Our first union report will be from SMM CTA President Sarah Braff. Thank you. Evening, everyone. This is a stressful time for everyone at every level. Um, this week has been a long year. Um, to quote John, uh, we know some of our students are struggling with a lack of social and impersonal experiences and that their parents are struggling with work, the kids 
and the uncertainty of COVID-19 and the world in general. And we know our teachers are working 12 hour days with no end in sight, but is hybrid the answer? Is it safe for children to return? And what about our staff? Should we be talking about coming back prior to being two weeks in the red? The LA Department of Health say it's possible under certain circumstances, but the infection rate is rising daily and our county has yet to move out of the purple widespread. Isn't it safer to keep distance learning as is with add and add in school activities in small groups gradually? In the meantime, would our time be better spent making our distance learning plan the best in the county rather than going hybrid? I know we are all doing the best we can to figure out as the situation shifts moment to moment. There are no easy answers and none that will satisfy all, but safety should and must be the primary motivation right now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and our next report will be from SEIU, uh, Chris Mock. Chris. Good evening. How are we all doing tonight? Good, I hope. So good evening, good evening board members, uh, Superintendent Girardi, Executive Cabinet, staff and community. What an uneventful week. I can't think of anything to talk about. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, despite all of our best efforts to bring much needed funding to our local communities and school districts, we are sorry to say that Prop 15 sadly did not pass. But <laughs> We push on and we continue in our fight. Here in Santa Monica, our candidates did exceptionally well and I wish to congratulate Mr. Keene um, and um, Ms. Leon Vasquez and our newest member, Ms. Jennifer Smith um, to, the, to the board. Uh, we do look forward um, to working with all of you again, um, or some of you again, continue to work with you. And the new ones, uh, the new uh, board member, or there might be two, because I know that Oscar is, I think, leaving us as well, right? To to your seat on the, the city. So now we can bug you over there. And trust me, we got things for you to do for us there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Um, we look forward to you in your new role. Um, so, uh, so this pandemic has proven to be kind of the beast of burden that we're going to have to carry here for a while. I think, you know, moving into the eventual reopening of our schools, SEIU, SMMCTA, um, as well as the district are working diligently to bring our students and um, staff back to schools with safety being the, the number one priority. Um, to this regard, SEIU's negotiation team for the reopening of schools continues to meet with the district. We met today to negotiate terms for our unit members. We've also been working as part of the Emergency Operations Center, which has been hard at work, making sure all of the safety procedures and protocols are in place and, um, for the safe reopening of schools. I mean, I personally want to thank Susan Brownstein for our, our district nurse has really been the lifeline for all of us throughout this crisis. I want to thank you, Susan, for, for, for all you're doing. Moving forward, and that's kind of where I stopped writing. Um, so I just want to say that moving forward, you know, we are, we are hard at work making sure that, that safety is the primary concern and that people out there are working and our unit members are, are safe at work and that, we're, um, and that we're, we're making sure that everybody is comfortable. So to that regard, I know that we're all working together with this and that we're putting these things in place and that, that we've all kind of been collaborating very well with this. So I look forward to continuing that as we move forward and we press ahead. So thank you. Good evening. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, and our last communications report will be from our PTA Council report from PTA Council President Gabrielle Cohen. Gabrielle. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Maria Leon Vasquez, John Keene, and Jennifer Smith on your re-election and election to the school board. Um, we are very happy to have you. Our PTAs have been working very hard to support our parents and students this year. They're continuing to figure out ways to bring programs to our students and finding new ways to fundraise for those programs. They're hosting parent education seminars and trying to have virtual community events to keep everyone connected. Our PTA membership includes parents, teachers, administration, staff, and some students. Our mission is to advocate for the students and their families. 
So when we put our PTA hats on, we always have to look at what is best for the student first. We do support everyone at our schools, but we put the students' needs ahead of the rest. We know how hard this time has been during the pandemic for everyone. And we wanna think that uh, what we're doing is best for the students. So on the PTA, PTA Council Executive Board alone, which consists of only 19 people, in just that small group, we have very different needs and views. We have some who cannot under any circumstance send their kids back to school because of health issues. We have others who will not send them back because someone in their family is compromised or they fear for their health. We have some who would be really happy with distance learning plus, some who want the hybrid and some who are so desperate to get their kids back into school that they would do just about anything to get there. We know that no one will go back until the county health department says that it's safe enough, but it is because of all these differing views that we want to advocate again for what we hear and hope is already in the works, which is a meeting with parents, teachers, and administrators so that we all hear each other's thoughts and concerns and we can figure out what is really best for the students. We are, after all, all here to support them. As we are getting close to Thanksgiving, we also want to look at what we are thankful for. So we are thankful that we have a giving community that steps up to help each other, especially when some of our community is in need. We are thankful for our teachers, teachers who are working hard to make sure that they are delivering a quality education to our students. We're thankful for the staff and administrators and with a bit of extra thanks to our counselors for keeping our schools going and reaching out to our students to do what they can for them. We are thankful to all of our volunteers that give their time and energy to make this the best we can, even though they almost never get thanked. Last but not least, a few meetings ago, um, Lydia Moraro let you all know about the situation with brown paper tickets and the fact that our Sam Ohi Theater Department, Sam Ohi Band and Stairway to the Stars had all lost a lot of money and we were fighting for them to get it back. The board and administration stepped up to help us. So thank you to Lydia and thank you to all of you. And we have a little video from the Sam Ohi Theater for all of you. Will you please play the video? Okay, let me make sure I share this correctly. With sound, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make that larger and fingers crossed. My name is Kate Barraza and I just wanna say thank you to the Board of Education, Ben Drotti, Tom Whaley, Melody Kennedy, Gerardo Cruz, and everybody who helped with our brown paper ticket debacle. It meant a lot to the Sam Ohi Theater Program, it meant a lot to the students who were involved in the Adams family. Um, it was wonderful for the students to have that to reflect on as we went into distance learning. And your support of Sam Ohi Theater means a lot, and we're very, very grateful. So thank you. Shows how much you support the arts. For me, the theater program has definitely changed my life. It's giving me a sense of community and helped me grow as a person and as an actor. This is a big thank you and shout out to Dr. Drotty, Tom Whaley, and the entire board for coming up with the funds to making us whole for Sam Hawaii Theater. I am the Adams family specifically taught me how to be confident and I am forever grateful for that experience. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you so much to Dr. Drotty, Tom Whaley, and the rest of the Board of Education for supporting Sam Ohi Theater. It means so much to us as a theater program. The theater program here at Sam Ohi has given me some of the best experiences of my life. Hi, I'm Tolly Chase, and I would like to say thank you to Dr. Drotty, Tom Whaley, and the rest of the Board of Education for supporting our Sam Ohi Theater program. You have no idea how much it helped and how much it meant to everyone involved, whether they were in the cast, the crew, the pit, or a director or producer. It really, really goes to show how much you appreciate the students as well as Sam Ohi. Thank you to the Board of Education for funding us the money that we would have lost to brown paper tickets. Adam's Family was not only a super fun show, but it broke a lot of records for ticket sales, and it's, a, and it's really going to help our theater department grow. Realness, um, I love theater. It has totally shaped who I am as a person and really given me a true sense of kind of having a home outside of home. And Adam's Family was actually the first Samo show I got to participate in. 
And I'm so grateful for that experience. Thank you very much to everyone that was involved in getting back our money from brown paper tickets. Um, we were also incredibly distressed about that. And I have a daughter that is now a junior and she worked so hard as well as all the other kids did on Adam's family. So thank you so very much from the bottom of our heart. Did you were you letting that that be your closing statement or are that you that is my your... closing statement thank, <laughs> thank you all i i happen to be on the the samo high steering um committee so that was from us to you thank you all very much thanks gabrielle that was wonderful um which brings us to our superintendent's report dr drowdy well thank you um I miss uh, Cohen for sharing that. I mean, I mean you could have just dropped the mic and walked away <laughs> like you intended to, but I'm sure John messed it up for you. But uh, thank you for doing that. But I don't know about anybody else that's watching this, but man, that just kind of showed me how much we miss the, the, uh, the, the usual activities that we would normally attend. So I know my heart was just pumping watching watching all that. So I can't wait to the day, the day we're actually able to come back and, and, um, and, and witness all that in person. So what I'm going to do is just give you an update about the COVID-19 and then, and then another topic. Uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, we are still in tier one, which is a purple, uh, the most res restrictive tier. Uh, our county's positivity rate has gone up slightly, um, but our daily cases per 100,000 um, 100, uh, 100, people have gone down from 8.0 to 7.5. Uh, a reminder that we need to be at seven cases per 100,000 or below uh, for two weeks before the county can move to into tier two, which is the red. Once in tier two, we must be there for uh, two weeks before uh, the county would allow uh, schools to reopen. Um, in my weekly information meetings with the health department, uh, yesterday uh, it was shared by uh, uh, Mrs. Ferrer that uh, given the rise in cases nationwide, uh, they're, they're, uh, it, it, they are a little troubled, and also in the, in, the, in the county, what they expected was that uh, they wanted us to, to be in a better space going into the holiday breaks. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not the case. We are actually just is continuing to uh, have a rises in cases, and they're, they're just not confident about what's going to happen when we go into the winter season when uh, families gather together, students are coming back from colleges and, and it's cold. It, it, uh, obviously when it's cold, you're gonna be inside. And uh, so, so they're a little disturbed by the fact that we are still at where we are in the county. And they're not sure if it, uh, us going into winter in this situation is gonna benefit us in getting into the red. So I'm just kind of giving you just heads up. They're very, uh, they, they are concerned and uh, Mr. Ferrer actually mentioned yesterday that, that she's not confident that originally we thought we could be in the red in November, but she's, she highly doubts that now, doubts that now, and that, um, and that she actually anticipates if we are going to be in the red, it may end up being after the winter break. If things, um, uh, I mean, that's with his fingers crossed because of all the conditions I just described, uh, uh, but 
people are just going to have to behave during the holiday breaks uh, to try to drive down the numbers. And um, and it will keep you posted on that. While in tier one, while in the purple, uh, um, uh, as I mentioned before, schools can apply to reopen for grades TK2. And, and, and priority will be given to schools with higher socioeconomic disadvantaged populations. Um, um, but I want to let the community know that we are applying uh, for TK2 waivers. We're in the process of finalizing that, that application process. Uh, we've consulted with our, our, our unit members uh, about that idea. Uh, obviously, that's still, uh, like uh, Mrs. Braff said, that, that, that is causing anxiety, but that's a piece that we have to continue to work through. But our intention is to apply for all the elementary schools. Um, we know of one district, Las Virginis. Uh, uh, I th believe they have 10 elementaries and they received nine uh, approvals. So they, they're either going to start this week or next week with a TK2 uh, program. So uh, I also know that a lot of schools in our neighboring area uh, and my conversation with the superintendents around us, they're, they're also going to apply for the TK2 waiver. So we'll see where uh, we'll keep you posted on that. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, uh, I mean, uh, it all depends on the volume that they get, but they're only going to approve 30 waivers per week. And they're going to look at a criteria of which schools are uh, the, uh, the, the higher, have the highest numbers of social economic disadvantage and they'll make their way down from there. But we'll keep you posted on that. We'll keep you posted about that. Uh, we mentioned already that athletic conditioning for our athletes are already taking place. Uh, um, so for, for you athletes out there and parents of athletes, uh, you're, uh, please be in contact with your coaches uh, as to when do, uh, we can, uh, the practices will resume. Uh, remember, these aren't regular practices you would have. There are some conditions that you have to follow. We have to follow protocols we have to follow. So they, they call it athletic conditioning. And uh, so that's, that's on its way. We just, uh, we just um, were granted a waiver uh, approval for our um, uh, CDS program to be able to provide uh, school work hubs. That uh, approval came this afternoon uh, for two sites uh, at Franklin and at Grant. And um, we plan to, our, our, our game plan is to have uh, some things in place by uh, uh, November 16th to start some programs. So we're gonna start looking at our list of who who we asked in the past who needs supervision, and we're going down the list on that. Uh, our initial attempt to contact families that are that initially indicated that they, they were interested, we have, we're learning that they, are, they have found other means or are no longer, uh, some may not no longer interested. So we do have room in certain areas. So we're going to be in communication with families from that list that we have to try to uh, to try to uh, support families with the with supervision. Our English Learner and Special Education in School Support Services Hubs, are, uh, we also plan to start that around November 16th as well. Uh, we're in the final fa uh, phases of getting things in place uh, to get that going. So more information will come uh, with those uh, learning hubs to support English learners, some uh, targeted special education students, uh, and so on. So in regards to our, our planning for reopening, when we are in the red, Okay, when we are in a red, so um, so uh, we we had our second town hall meeting uh, last week. I think from there, uh, the information we gathered, the questions that we received, uh, uh, indicated that we needed more conversations to occur at the local level for people to uh, really understand the complexity of what we are what we are uh, proposing. So the principals, the last two weeks, have been in meetings with their faculty. Uh, with their staff and also with parent groups. Uh, so so uh, they started last week and they're continuing this week to really unpack um, all the details of things, what a reopening would look like. And uh, so people would answer the questions and so on. The reason why we did that, uh, we did that is because we recognize that there's still some confusion around what a hybrid may look like, uh, what a live stream, what are we trying to accomplish with the uh, having a technology that will enhance live streaming in the classroom. What are we trying to accomplish with that? If not having that, what would that mean? So those conversations are taking place. Um, uh, um, in the meantime, we do have teachers piloting some of those technologies. And, and, and tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock, I have a meeting with, some, with the principals just to, get a, uh, just to get some feedback as to what, what, what came of those meetings. And from there, we'll determine what our next steps are going to be. 
uh, anecdotally, uh, somewhat, uh, I've been hearing how those meetings have been taken. Uh, uh, I'm somewhat hearing the, 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 the type of conversations that I've been having and people, the questions people still have. If it's consistent to what I'm hearing now, uh, when I'm gonna hear tomorrow, uh, the, I've already warned everybody that I may need to have a district-wide conversation in which we poll teacher leaders, um, and we poll principals, and we, when we poll uh, parent leaders uh, or some parents to have a district-wide conversation with, with everybody in the same room to, to repeat that conversation so we can troubleshoot and get people to, to come to consensus on, on uh, or, or understanding of what we're trying to accomplish there. After that, we'll, we, will then, um, we will then survey everyone. Uh, so I'm hoping the meetings that I've had in the community, uh, there are several meetings, the meetings at the site level and this, this district-wide conversation we'll have with the, with the different constituents in the same room. I'm hoping that will give people an idea of, of, of what we're proposing so that when we send a survey out, there's a clear understanding of the choices that people have to make. So I'm not sure people, write, people really understand at this point where, when we say hybrid with a live stream, what that means, uh, just based on the chatter and information that uh, I've been receiving. So. So we're trying to correct that information by these, these extra meetings that we are having. So with that said, uh, that, that, that concludes the, the COVID-19 update. Uh, we'll continue to keep you posted. We'll have, we'll have another, inf uh, another information coming out um, this weekend or, or Monday, just around everything I just said, but it will be in a written form. I wanna to jump to another topic. Uh, that I think it's, it's been kind of heavy on my heart uh, just around some things that have occurred this week and last week, and uh, I'll, uh, and then also just reflecting on what's going on in the nation right now. And this is more or less to both communities of Santa Monica and Malibu that I say this. Uh, you know, with the national election season and somewhat behind us, I mean, I cannot help but to think about the deep divisions that persist within our our nation. These divisions have hurt our nation's ability to successfully move us all forward while also undermining that has, what has made us the beacon of hope for the rest of the world. As I think locally, I want our community to be the model of how different points of view can come together to work through complex issues. With that said, there is no denying that the conversations as to how to create two new equitable school districts in Malibu and Santa Monica is both emotional and complex. But as we start, uh, as we uh, as we sort through these complexities, let us remember that our ultimate goal is to do what is in the best interest of the children of both communities. I am an educator, and not a politician. In that spirit, I have devoted my entire career to advocating for all all children, where they are from has never been my uh, my concern, but rather whether they have the necessary support and resources to be successful in the classroom. I know that when there are discussions about how to divide resources, it is quite instinctual for people to feel that they have to protect their territory and position. However, the fundamental problem with allowing our instincts to lead is that it does not allow for new points of views to have a fair opportunity to be heard and analyzed. Furthermore, it creates a deeper divide that risks hurting the very people we are all seeking to support. As a community, we are at a crossroads. Do we come together and have a difficult conversation that if done collectively can ensure that none of our students are negatively impacted in the long run? Or do we take a page from the national conversation and separate into camps? In the hope that we will come together and choose the former, you have my commitment that I will continue to be open, honest, and transparent. You may not like what I have to say, but know that my recommendation to the Board of Trustees will always come from the perspective of what I believe to be the interest of every single child that attends our school district. I believe in our community because I have seen firsthand what we can do when we, when we work together. Some recent examples include us successfully dealing with an outbreak of norovirus in our district a few years ago. The horrific fires we experienced with the Woolsey and Skorball fires that were 
followed by nerve wracking mudslides. Another example, we both communities are agreeing to separate their approach to acquiring the necessary financial support for addressing our aging school buildings and establishing separate bond areas within the districts and or within the district and overwhelmingly passing measures M and SMS. And lastly, it's not the last thing, but uh, uh, one thing I'll mention is coming together to quickly reorganize our delivery method for instruction from in-person to distance learning that most students, staff, and parents have indicated that they are satisfied with, even though we are all looking forward to the day that we are in person. With the disruption that has taken place, the students of Santa Monica and Malibu have and continue to achieve great success when compared to most students across California and the nation. Let, let, us, uh, let, the, uh, let us remember those successes as we navigate the complexities of creating two new equitable school districts. We have it in us to achieve that. So uh, before I, I close, I would like to just inform uh, everyone, the district, that, uh, that we've been working on establishing a, 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 a communications for both communities and FAQ that will explain the process of how property taxes are collected and distributed in the county and how eventually how the school districts are funded, particularly Santa Monica and Malibu. The, the FAQ will also explain how the district's allocation uh, allocates its funds to benefit all of our students. And then moving forward, FAQs will be one of the main tools that the district will utilize to, in order to provide you information and questions uh, that people may, uh, may ask during this complex, um, uh, 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 complex things that we have to do in separating the two, separating to two different districts. So with that said, that concludes the, the, the superintendent's report. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Drani. Which brings us now to our consent calendar. And I would like to pull one item from consent, which is uh, item four, Dot four administrative appointments. We will do those separately. Um, do any other board members have anything they would like to pull from consent? Okay, seeing none, I will ask I'll, for a mo Yes, Richard. I should say I'll move those. Was oh, that a motion? Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Consent has been moved by Richard, seconded by uh, Maria. We will do a uh, roll call vote to approve the openness. Uh, Lori? Yes. Richard? Yes. Craig? Thumbs up. Ralph? Yes. Oscar? Yes. Brianna? Yes. Maria? Yes. Estelle? I think Estelle had to go. Oh, well, I outed her. I'm so sorry, Estelle. Uh, and I'm a yes as well. So consent has been moved uh, with the exception of administrative appointment. Um, uh, which brings us to administrative appointments. So I think for that, we will go to uh, Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly? Actually, I think Dr. Drotty is gonna take this, but we are uh, really pleased to bring two recommendations tonight. Uh, we have the house principal at Santa Monica High School and the director of research assessment and evaluation. And I think Dr. Drotty is going to do the introductions for us. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll first read, read, read recent information about our, our, uh, our candidate and then, and, then, and, and then each of them will say a few words after the, after the introduction. So uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Mrs. Uh, Murray Cruz as the new, as my, our recommended candidate for the house principal. Uh, Mrs. Cruz is well known to Samuel High as the current math department chair, school side council uh, chair, professional development leader and flex time coordinator. She has served Samuel High for the past 13 years as a geometry and algebra teacher while assuming additional leadership roles on campus. Prior to working at Samuel High, she taught in Texas and Kansas for a total of 20 years uh, in, educate, uh, in education. Mrs. Cruz experience just, uh, uh, I just mentioned, plus her re report with students staff and teachers made her the perfect fit for the open position following the departure of Dr. Vivian Choi who moved from, from this area. Mrs. Mrs. Cruz holds a bachelor's degree in secondary mathematics education and a master's degree in curriculum and instruction from uh, both from University of Kansas. Her appointment is effective November 6th 
We are working on the timing for a transition uh, to, uh, to the new position. We congratulate Mrs. Cruz on her new position and know, uh, and know that she will have continued success serving the students and staff at Samuel High. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Cruz. So Maria, well, you can go ahead and say a few words if you unmute yourself. Thank you so much. I am very excited for this opportunity to continue growing and working at the, with the community that I love. I am excited to continue serving um, Sam Ohai and I'm passionate about all of the things that we're trying to do and supporting all of our students. So I really appreciate this opportunity and thank you. Very good, thank you. So, uh, so board members, we will have one vote at the end to approve these appointments. So I will then ask Dr. Drotti to introduce um, our next uh, candidate. So I, I, now I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Alicia Bellet uh, for the open position for Director of Assessment, Research and Evaluation. Uh, she's our, our candidate. Dr. Be uh, Bailey comes to, S to the district from the Anaheim Union High School District where she served as a high school principal for the past three years. Prior to her position as principal, she served as both middle school and high school principal in the Torrance School District and was a middle and high school English teacher, then teacher on special assignment for the ABC Unified School District. In total, Dr. B uh, uh, Bailey brings 15 years of teaching and leadership experience to our district. Her experience includes quantitative research and experimental design, developing curriculum, program evaluation uh, processes, data anal analysis, course sequences and career pathways, and professional learning community development. Dr. Bailey holds a Bachelor of Arts in English from Humboldt State, a master's degree in secondary education in secondary curriculum, and a doctorate in education leadership from Cal State Fullerton. Her appointment, her appointment is effective November 6, with the start date being finalized. We welcome Dr. Bailey to SMUSD and our education services team, and we are anxious for her to uh, get started. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Bailey. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve this district and its community. I look forward to bringing my experience from uh, working with students who are high performing and students who are disengaged and bringing them back into engagement in, in the school. And I am so fortunate to be part of a team that is dedicated to excellence through equity. And I thank you for this opportunity and I will work every day to earn that. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. Very good. So do I have a, a motion from the board to accept these two appointments? Approve the appointment. I see it moved by Richard and seconded by everybody, but I saw Ralph first, so I'm going to go with Ralph. Um, and we'll do a roll call vote. Um, uh, Craig, two thumbs up. Richard? Yes, with big smiles. Lori? Yes. Um, Brianna? Yes. Oscar? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. Maria? Yes. And I'm a yes as well, so that is unanimous. Um, welcome, but well, welcome to one and welcome to a new position to one. So congratulations and thank you so much for your future service to SMMUSD. Terrific. Um, that's exciting. <laughs> it's just so nice to see so many SAMO teachers um, here to support new hires and to support Murray. I think it's wonderful that their colleagues are excited for these these, these opportunities. Anyway, uh, which brings us to general public comments. I will turn it over to Board Vice President Lieberman. Yes, um, we have two public comments tonight. And I just want to say to anyone who's watching this for the board meeting for the first time, this is an opportunity for people to speak to the board on items that are not on the agenda. So because of that, you won't see any discussion about them or any uh, action because they're not on the agenda. And we're not allowed to do that. So um, tonight we have two public speakers. Each of you will have three minutes. The first one is Nina Fresco, and the second one is Nikki Kohoff. Sarah, are you looking for Nina? <laughs> Hi there. 
Good evening, school board. Uh, the Santa Monica Conservancy uh, urges you to pause phase three of the Samo High Campus Plan because preservation alternatives for the historic resources on Prospect Hill have not been fully considered. Preservation and adaptive reuse of buildings like these is not really a question of if it can be done, but rather a question of how. Qualified preservation architects and engineers, rather than those primarily experienced in new construction, have not yet been consulted. We are grateful to the Save the History Building petition that gathered 2,500 signatures in recent weeks, which brought this issue to our attention. And we thank your staff for the comprehensive November 3rd, 2020 memo. The memo confirms our earlier findings that there are gaps in the historic preservation planning assessment for Sam Ojai conducted so far. Historic preservation, especially on a school site, provides opportunities for multidisciplinary experiences in history, sustainability, art, architecture, and culture. A school district that embraces it provides invaluable lessons for students. Lots and lots of schools are adaptively reusing historic structures, just like those, these here in Santa Monica, to create modern learning spaces all over LA, all over the state, and all over the country, and they win awards for it. I hope those of you who've not yet scheduled a Zoom with us to learn more about our ask will respond to our invitation soon. And we hoped a complete public consideration of adaptive reuse of the historic buildings at Sam High will be initiated at an upcoming board member meeting in the future. And any of you, if I forgot to send an invitation to somebody who would like to hear more about this, uh, feel free to contact the Conservancy and we will schedule you in. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you, Nina. Uh, and our next speaker is Nikki Kohoff. Hi, before I start, I think that somebody else was having trouble with the signing up for Google. Well, I don't know who that is, but uh, uh, so did far, Sarah, like did Sarah get an email from Esther also? Mm -hmm. Well, Sarah can look into that, but Nikki. Okay, I just want to make sure because you said two, and I, I knew. Yeah, I that's all I have. That, I mean, we're obviously not even in the same place, but it's I all do we see have. an email from Esther. Pardon? I do see an email from Esther. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I'll start now. Um, so I also wanted to uh, comment on the history building and ask that the current planning and con any construction impacting that be. Uh, halted so that a thorough analysis could be done. I went on the walkthrough of the uh, Jams Auditorium on Monday and you know we did discuss the historic process and so it's unfortunate that the school district doesn't have any formal landmarking process to comply with so it's it's sort of left up to the the extent of the diligence that the district conducts and it was confirmed on Monday that uh, no formal analysis was conducted for the history building. Um, and it, it, we just owe it to our community to do that. There's no reason not to do it. It's the right thing to do. Um, and in order to not uh, engage in anything that will re result in irreversible harm, we need to stop now. Um, there's plenty of, of other options with the history building of, of repurposing it that would be an example of sustainability with our sustainability plan. Um, that would be a great example for everybody. Um, the Jans Auditorium was kind of, uh, I mean, it was, it's huge, it's gonna look amazing, but I couldn't help think that the combined grand total now, 44 million is what the community was prior, uh, previously unwilling to spend on the Civic Auditorium. And if they knew now what our combined community dollars were spending, I, I think just sadly that probably would have been where it would have gone. Um, second, uh, I would like to comment on the Brown Act and, and the lack of a dial-in for this meeting still. Uh, Frida Rossi has been able to add dial-ins to her meetings and you guys still haven't done it for the school board meeting. There really needs to be a dial-in for this. Also, the agendas are still not searchable. Um, so that's still a problem and a violation of the Brown Act. Uh, third, 
athletic clearance. Last year, I worked out with the high school administrators, a process so that our, we don't have to submit our kids' uh, private information to a third party just to play sports. It's not required by CIF or any board policy. And we worked that out. And this year, the process started again, asking folks to sign up with athleticclearance.com. So Brenda Osaki has actually been super helpful at the high school in putting together a PDF of all the forms we worked out last year. But the admin has been dragging its feet a little in changing the actual instructions for all students so they don't know that this is possible to do. Nobody should be asked to submit their physical form to the school or a third party. It waives HIPAA protections. Uh, third, Drati should circulate the Malibu letter to everyone. He blasted Malibu and as part of the conversation, everybody's entitled to see the letter they returned to him. They asked for it to be circulated and he did not. And um, that's part of the conversation. The speaker's and time is up. I'm sorry, uh, Lori did, um, Sarah did. I'm sorry, did I just mute myself? I just yeah. asked Sarah, is there another speaker? Cause I don't have it on here. Um, yeah, I added Esther's name to the list. She did email me uh, about general public comment. Okay, I assume that's Esther Hickman, where there you are. Okay, um, you have three minutes to address the board. Thank you. So I just wanted to share a, a bit of the comments from the um, petition that went around, just kind of hearing how people are feeling in the community. And um, I think what the petition has revealed is that people really do care. And now that it's been brought to their attention, um, it's something that obviously is urgent right now with all the horrible things happening um, that should be addressed um, because the building is slated to be demolished in the summer. Um, that's why we're bringing it up right now with urgency. And it would be a shame to lose these buildings and lose these connections that people have to local history forever. So I'll just read some comments and then you can mute me when my time's up. Thanks. So um, I'm just gonna start from the top. My grandmother, Marjorie Pierce, my grandmother, Mary White, my great aunt, Dorothy White, my father, David Marshall and I, Kevin Marshall and all graduated from Samuel High. I used to eat lunch under the palm tree at the top of the hill on the left of the main entrance. Please do not destroy this piece of Santa Monica and history. A lot of great Samuel memories here. I believe in preserving history. Some things are sacred and historical buildings are meant to be preserved. I would be incredibly sad to walk through that quad and not see that beautiful building as the backdrop. It should be protected. This building is historical and important to the community. We shouldn't destroy something just because it's old. From a senior citizen who's 82 years old, the history building should be saved. It represents all the students who have passed through these doors. It is Samo High. Please save this gorgeous building. We need historical buildings still in our lives, even at schools. It needs to be saved. What a total waste of school bond funds. I'll never vote for another bond if it's your idea of how to waste money. There is true value in retaining historical artifacts, especially when they can be practically restored for current use. Let's give our students a taste of their past. This is a historic building for Santa Monica. Please don't tear it down. I graduated from Santa Monica High School in 2009. It would be a shame to see this beautiful building that I once had class in no longer around. My mother, aunt, all three of my sisters, and now my nephew have roamed the history building halls. It's a part of our history. Leave this original building. As a graduate of Samuel High and 45 year resident of Santa Monica, I'm sick and tired of outsiders destroying our city and its history. Respect architectural history. Class of 2002, tradition, history, memories. The school is nothing like I remember, hardly recognizing the approach the school from different, as you approach the school from different directions. Keep history, tradition, and the memories alive by allowing this building to stand. The public uh, speaker's time is up. Thank you, Sarah. Um, while it may be tempting for board members to get in a conversation here, I want to just remind us all that we really can't. The one thing I would ask is that 
there is now a memo that has been written <laughs> by our staff to the board. And I believe um, that it has been begun to be distributed um, to the public and could very well be posted on our website to make it easier for people who want to learn more and are interested what, wherever they fall on this issue and want to learn more about what exactly our process has been. So I can, can, can we can we you know can we agendize? Can, we need to have a report. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, do have one, Oscar. Read it first. That's my suggestion. Okay, so so in that it'll be it'll clar you'll clarify things. The, 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 that's what's going on. And we we do have we do already have an agendized update on phase three in January. So at worst, the latest case scenario would be our ability to talk about that in January. But yeah, the, the, the memo does cover so much information. It's a 10 page memo. Yeah. Okay, um, on that note, then I'll take us to our discussion items, which is discussion item H1, consider revising BP and AR 1312.3 uh, uniform complaint procedures. I'm gonna assume Dr. Kelly. Yeah. Dr. Kelly. So just, uh, this is just a, pretty much a routine update of the uniform complaint procedures. Um, there's just been some additional uh, state laws that have changed this slightly. Uh, we had a recent uh, revision just this last, uh, um, about a year ago. Um, no, it was uh, last spring, but um, so there's just some minor changes there, um, specifically adding medical condition to a protected class. Um, there was a change in the non-compliance with physical education instructional minutes, which prior to that was limited to element complaints regarding elementary instructional minutes. That has been changed to include all grades seven to 12 as well. Um, so that's really the, 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 the changes recommended for the uniform complaint procedure. I was muted. Uh, are there any uh, questions or comments for Dr. Kelly on that item? <laughs> Seeing none, I will then move us to discussion item H2, consider revising AR and deleting E2 and E3, 1312.4, Williams Uniform Complaint Procedure. Dr. Kelly, continuation. So this is just similarly, it's a revision of the Williams Uniform Complaint delete the reference from the high school exit exam, uh, delete, delete some of the exhibits. Um, Williams uniform complaint is part of the uniform complaint process, but it's specific um, to the areas that are addressed on the administrative regulations. Do we have any questions or comments for Dr. Kelly on that item? Okay, so both of those will come back to us as major action items at probably the November 19th meeting. I'll look for Sarah and Sarah nodded her head. So those will come back on November 19th. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kelly, which brings us to major action item one, annual public hearing and adoption of resolution number 29, 20-9, sufficiency of instructional materials and Williams Settlement Instructional Materials Funds. This is usually Dr. Mora or Dr. Kelly. I believe it's Dr. Mora. Yes, Mora. Yeah. it is. Definitely. Thank you so much. This is just to um, reaffirm that we have all of the instructional materials as delineated by the Williams um, process um, and wanted to make sure to just articulate that with the board. Questions or comments? This, this is a major action item, so questions or comments? Um, well, for, sorry, I would do my proceed, which is, do I have a motion to approve? <laughs> motion by Ralph. Second and, by and Lori. let me just a question. Yeah, now um, comments or questions. So, Dr. so Moore, moved by Ralph, seconded by Lori, and now discussion. Okay. So, so wow. Dr. Moore, this was postponed from uh, a few weeks back. It, was that for a particular reason? I can't recall. No, of course. So I'll, I will share with you. So I wanted to make sure that we um, made the public announcement multiple, multiple vehicles, right? We did it as past practice, but I, I just wanted to reassure that it was sent digitally as well. So we had met all of the requirements 
um, with how we had publicly posted and um, informed our community about the public hearing, but I really just wanted to be very mindful and give our community additional time to be aware of this public hearing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Of course. Um, and I, hold on, I, I messed up. Um, I was supposed to open the public hearing. So my apologies. So let's open the public hearing. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved by Maria, seconded by Ralph. Uh, TJ, my parliamentarian, do I need to roll call to open the public hearing? Thank you, Dr. TJ. Uh, Craig, yes. No, TJ is a yes. Craig is a thumbs up. Lori. Yes. Brianna. Yes. Oscar. Thumbs up, Ralph. Yes. Maria. Yes. Great, and I'm a yes. Um, thank you. So back to the discussion. I apologize. And there are no there are, there are no public meetings, so I guess I can close this. So do we have a motion? I move motion? we close. I move we close the public hearing. Thank you so much. Is there a I second? Second. I second. second by Maria? And let's go around the room again. Uh, Craig. Thumbs up, Richard. Yes. Lori. Yes. Brianna. Yes. Oscar. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Maria. Yes. And I'm a yes. I apologize for that. I forgot to write that note to myself. Um, and I did not remember. So back to the discussion, Ralph, you had questions for Dr. Mora? Or... No, no further questions. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions for Dr. Mora on this item? Okay, so do we have a motion to approve um, this uh, resolution? I'll move by it. Lori, moved by Lori, seconded by Craig. So we will roll call. Um, Craig? Yes, Richard? Yes. Lori? Yes. Brianna? Yes. Oscar? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Maria? Yes. And I'm a yes, so that is unanimous to approve that. Great, which now brings us to major action item two, renew resolution number 20-2, declaring an emergency and delegating authority, excuse me, to enter into contracts necessitated by the spread of coronavirus and review action taken under BP 2210. Uh, is this Carrie Upton? It is, once again. Carrie. I'm back again. We are still uh, under an emergency with the pandemic and still request uh, permission to uh, continue making emergency purchases for this purpose uh, uh, for the, as we continue through the uh, pandemic. Uh, in this period, we made $60,542 uh, purchase of uh, personal protective equipment. And the two earlier items that you approved, uh, which are for uh, HEPA filters, um, air filtration, uh, air scrubber uh, systems for those areas that we cannot put the ionization in was for 717 $1,774. So we continue to prepare uh, for that day when we can get kids back uh, and teachers and get, you know, resume uh, education. So we ask that you uh, pass this once again with a fourth, fifth majority, and we will continue uh, making these purchases as necessary. Thank you, Carrie. Um, do we have a motion? By Craig, seconded by Ralph. Uh, any questions or comments for Carrie on this item? Okay, so we'll go to a roll call. Uh, Maria? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Oscar? A thumbs up. Brianna? Yes. Lori? Yes. Richard? Yes. Craig? And I'm a yes, so that is unanimous. Which now brings us to item three, adopt resolution number 2011, Beyond Bond Authority. That's Carrie Upton again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so uh, the uh, state uh, facility bonds, uh, they have uh, already allocated uh, what's going to come from those bonds. Uh, one good part of that is we actually did get an allocation uh, for a facility hardship for the uh, John Adams Auditorium and its seismic issues and our need to replace that building uh, based on its structural. So we will be getting uh, $3,393,000 uh, to help with, the, uh, with that program. Uh, so that's helpful. But this resolution is we still have capacity at some of our schools 
uh, and we are doing work that if there was money in a bond uh, and state facility money, we would potentially get money for that. So uh, the suggestion uh, from our consultants at uh, school facilities consultants is that to have you all pass a re adopt a resolution uh, beyond the, the bond authority, which allows us to go ahead and put in for money for those projects uh, where we have capacity uh, so we can get state funding if and when they ever uh, go out for additional state bonds and there's additional bond funds for us to get. So that's what the resolution is for. Um, and uh, we ask that you approve it. Great, so is there a motion? By Maria, seconded by Richard. Questions or comments for Carrie? Okay, then we will go to a roll call. Uh, Craig. Thumbs up. Richard. Yes. Lori. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Oscar. Yes. Brianna. Yes. Maria. Yes. And I am a yes. That is unanimous. So now we move to major action item four, adopt resolution 20-12 uh, in support of submission of applications for eligibility determination and funding authorization to sign applications and associated documents. Carrie. I could take I this one actually. Say Melody. 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 <laughs> Sorry. It, no, it's perfectly okay. He could have done it as well, but since his name's on there, I think it might be appropriate for me to do it. Um, this one is just, it, it's in conjunction with the one, the, the last resolution you just approved. And it's just giving um, Dr. Drotty and Carrie Upton the authority to, to um, sign for these projects and for um, these fundings. Great. That's it. Um, so do I have a motion? Craig, seconded by someone? Richard, uh, questions or comments for Melody and or Carrie on this? Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call. Ralph. Yes, sir. Oscar. Brianna, Ralph, uh, Oscar's thumbs up. Brianna. Yes. Maria. Yes. Lori. Yes. Richard. Yes. Craig. Thumbs up and I am a yes as well. So that is passed. Major action item five. Um, adopt That's... resolution 20, 2013, geographic uses restrictions for RDA pass-throughs per AB 1290. I could take this one as well. Good evening. Um, this is for our redevelopment agency pass-throughs um, and um, the uh, RDAs were uh, dissolved, dissolved on um, February the 1st of 2012, however, um, uh, Santa Monica is actually a recipient of those pass-throughs. Um, We're still entitled to continue to receive um, two ongoing statutory pass-through payments per um, AB 1290 um, from the county auditor controllers for um, a projected another 22, future, 22 years into the future. Um, with that, um, the facility, what it would do is the facilities, it, it shares, um, excuse me, it shares the pass-throughs which are subject to compliance resolutions, including an estimated $22.6 million um, received for the past four uh, fiscal, uh, fiscal years since 2016-17 through 2019-20. Um, and there's a projected um, $139.97 million owed for the next 22 years. And with that, um, what happens is um, we are, um, restricting that to the geographic area of um, the Santa Monica area because that's where the dollars actually are generated through. Great. And that's it. So is there a motion? We do have Dante here if we need. Uh, I, 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 just how I was raised, I do the motion in the second and then I sorry, go to discussion, sorry. but I, I know there's disagreement on that. Moved by Richard, seconded by Ralph. Any comments, questions for Carrie, Melody, Dante? Seeing none, we will do a roll call. Craig. Richard. Yes. Lori. Yes. Brianna. Yes. Oscar. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Maria. Yes. And I am a yes. So that passes unanimously as well, which brings us, we have three information items that people can see on our agenda. 
Uh, I have no board member items. I have no requests from DAC. We have no continuation of public comment, uh, which brings us to board member comments. And I know we have a couple board member comments. Richard. I don't have to go first, but um, I just I just felt that I, well, I feel, com feel compelled to say something in response to the president's remarks right before we came to this board meeting today. As an institution of, of learning, I can only imagine that our social studies students and our students in their government courses at our high schools were cringing when they heard the sitting American president lie about the processes of democracy in this country. And I think that it needs to be stated. I'm a political science professor, a teacher at the California Community College. It, it, just the lies and what he said tonight is just so, so disheartening and frightening. And I never thought I would hear any such thing from an American president. Never did I think that. I, I'm, I'm appalled and disgusted. And I think that everybody who is committed to truth and education and to opportunity and to the process of democratic governance, we need to speak up. We need to speak up loudly. No one can turn a blind eye to this. It was absolutely appalling. Thank you, TJ. Um, anybody else have uh, board member comments? Craig. Um, so this is with regard to the reopening plans. Mm -hmm. um, so I've sat in on a couple of meetings, three meetings this week. And I think it's important to talk to parents and teachers, not so much staff. Um, you know, we all had and have a strong conviction that getting kids back to in school learning is so very, very, very important. And we, the board, and staff have had a huge commitment to getting that done. And our parents voted, surveyed 70-30 that that's what they wanted. Um, staff after that they did, staff and teachers after they did this miraculous creation of a distance learning curriculum out of nothing over the summer, thank you all again and for all the hard work that everybody's doing to keep that running. And, and I do think that the vast, vast majority of people think that that's extraordinary, especially under the circumstances, but just extraordinary in general. So that's a very, very high watermark of achievement for, for all of you. Um, and I know everybody, the parents are grateful, and the kids are grateful. So that needs to be said. Where I wanna go with it tonight though is I want us to be careful because I think the vision of getting all the kids back to school in some sort of hybrid, which is how they would come back, and the reality may not line up the way everybody expects. And for me, I've had this really strong commitment to do it, but as I face the reality of it and listen to the teachers and listen to the parents, and as the parents hear the reality of it, we gotta be careful to make sure we don't accidentally have a reality that underperforms our hopes for it. And we leave something that's actually working pretty well for the kids. So um, the, the, the core of hybrid learning is we can't have all the kids back in the same classroom. There's gotta be distance. Well, we don't have twice as many classrooms and we don't have twice as many teachers. So whatever we do is gonna be some work around for that. So I don't have a conclusion, but I'm calling out to the parents in particular, also a little bit to the board and to the community as we have these expectations, we're moving forward to try to pick a plan. I want us to all be really clear that we're trying to find a solution to getting our kids back to school because we all want them back in school, but I think we've gotta be open to, if we can't make that work, we 
we can't just, we, I think we're not going to want to force it. So we've all got to really hold hands and figure out if, if we found a solution that gets our kids back. And that's, I think, Dr. Grady, you talked earlier and you as a great uh, superintendent comment, you talked earlier about this community discussion, which I'm sure this is gonna be part of, but really we need our teachers and our parents to sit down and go, is what we, is the best that we can do for hybrid good enough, given there's a pandemic? I mean, everybody's gotta remember, it's not like we did this for no reason, we did this because we're trying to kids keep our kids safe, which is the most fundamental obligation we have. So I want us, I, I'm calling on everybody to just look at what the reality is and let's test our hopes and our theoretical vision against the reality to make sure that when we change out of distance learning, which has become a safe haven for a lot of people and is successful, that we're doing that for something better, that we don't make a difficult situation worse in the name of trying to make it better. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Um, uh, other board member comments? Right, Lori? I just want to yeah, say very simply, I want to echo both Richard's and Craig's comments. I think they were really well put on the topics of the day at our level and at a higher level at the national level. So thank you both. And I'll, I'll echo them in my own, my own way as well. I, I, I want to speak to what uh, what came up out of the PTA Council report. Um, I think we're finally getting uh, genuine opportunities for teachers to meet as to meet together to talk about moving forward. We're creating those opportunities for parents, but the one thing that we're really lacking is that teacher parent in the same room talking about those needs that Craig referred to. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Principal Franklin is here, Cynthia McGrary is here, and I believe that Cynthia is trying to, to, to foster those kind of things. So I just, I really encourage any, uh, Dr. Drotty, our administration, any principals on this call, let's find ways to get parents in the room with teachers so we can stop talking past each other and have those conversations together. Because I think that's how we will move forward in this. To Craig's point, we will move forward in the best way, not the way that we think is the best way. Uh, and then to Richard's point, I didn't dress down today. I wore this specially because I don't know if you can see it, but I wore my Philadelphia pen shirt because bad things happen in Philadelphia. There's going to be some <laughs> things happening tonight in Pennsylvania. And I have faith in my state. So that's my, any other board member comments? I would like to say one thing, John. Yes, sir. I would like to congratulate John King Maria Leon Vasquez and Oscar de la Torre on their electoral success this week. And thank each of you for putting yourselves out there and serving our community. Congratulations. Thanks, TJ. And I thank think you. it's also probably, it's probably- And I, I want to say Jen Smith is thank in the you. audience and house. Jen, She's in the Jen too. house too. I'd want to congratulate Jen Smith. Um, who was to, thank you, Richard. <laughs> Those who ran for school board, it was wonderful to get to know you. We look forward to you staying involved in our district. For those who ran for council and did not achieve success, thank you for your attempt service. And then for those who have served us and were not reelected, thank you very much for your, your service to our community. Um, Oscar, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, no, I, I, it's an exciting time for our city. And um, it's great that, you know, we, we, uh, we participate and we get involved. Win or lose, I think it's a... Uh, a healthy sign of our democracy that people are participating. So it's a great time for us uh, in Santa Monica. Yep. Wonderful. So unless I see any other board member comments, I will use this as an opportunity to adjourn the meeting. Anybody else? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much and good luck tonight. Go Pennsylvania. <laughs> Thank you.